I guess I should probably just officially start the interview. Okay. I'm Hillary Hahn. I am here with... So, so percussion. percussion. <laughs> and how do you spell that? It's S-O with a line over the O. So as you know, it's a long O, how it's pronounced. Mm -hmm. With percussion, as in percussion. There you go. And we are here because well, we're backstage at the Mondavi Center in Davis, California, because we both have concerts at the same time in the same building. Yes. Exactly. Which I think is bad timing because I want to hear your concert. Likewise. <laughs> And I don't know, whoever finishes first, you know, we'll see who We're finishes first. We're 91 minutes. First. Yeah. We know exactly, exactly how long we are. Ah. <laughs> we may finish first. Okay. Well, I have about 90 minutes of music. Mm. You have 90 minutes of music? Can you play music? it without stopping and just <laughs> you go check out a minute of our show? I'll just go really, really, really fast. <laughs> and people will say, wow, this is such a fast program. <laughs> it didn't even stop. <laughs> um, and so you, you're based in Brooklyn. Yeah. 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 How does that work when an ensemble is based in a city? Does that mean you all live there? Are you all roommates? Basic oh, no. <laughs> no. I'm, just asking, I'm asking for a general audience because most people don't know what that means. <laughs> Our rehearsal studio is in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, mm -hmm. uh, and that's where we sort of all convene uh, to rehearse and workshop pieces and you know, write music and that sort of thing. Um, three of the, uh, Adam, Eric, and Jason all live in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. um, and I live in uh, Scarsdale, New York, just north of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So we all sort of live within the New York City area, but kind of come into one spot to rehearse. You mentioned that you write music. Sorry, I'm, I have to come in every now and then and fix my computer. So you write music? Yeah, and actually the, the show we're doing tonight is kind of a tribute to John Cage, but only about half of the concert is actually his repertoire. Mm -hmm. The other half of it is some music that we wrote, some music that some friends of ours wrote. It's all brand new, that, that half of it. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of doing a, a tribute to Cage, but also by way of stuff that inspires us to write music that we think has something to do with his legacy. Um, so it's a fair bit of what we do at this point, sort of group composing and also people bring in their own pieces. How do you group compose? Well, I, I, I say that, I mean, usually somebody does really bring in a piece, but by the time it gets to the table, then kind of all hell breaks loose in terms of people bringing their own ideas to it and trying stuff mm -hmm. out. I think maybe kind of the way that a lot of well, bands a lot work. Of, a lot of percussion ensemble stuff is all about the orchestration. It's like you, you know, what are you going to play these things on? And the, the mm -hmm. cage music we're playing tonight, you have a lot of, uh, you choose your own instruments in a lot of ways. So a lot of times when we write music, you know, we'll bring something in and then the kind of core is there on some level, but what it sounds like is really up to us as a group. So we go all different directions, you know. And mm -hmm. since we work together so much, if somebody says like, oh, this feels a little long, or this, what if we just do the first half and mix it with this? Or what if we take something you're working on and mix it with something I'm working on? That, you know, we're still figuring it out, to tell you no the truth, but that's insulted. kind of like a, uh, just a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> And then no, the next time they want it. something from your yeah, part, exactly. like, oh, okay, fine. Everybody yeah, remembers. Anyway. We try to be <laughs> good to each other. Well, yeah, tonight we're good. playing a piece of Jason's, and actually the way Jason wrote this piece is that, like, there's some notes and rhythms that are kind of structurally important, and he kind of says what you should be doing in each section, but there's also an element of um, improvisation in a way that people can make choices about what they're doing. So mm -hmm. in, in some ways we're going that way with our own composing that, it's not always completely written out on the page. There's a lot of space because we trust these guys to kind of like make decisions because they know what sound we're looking for. Mm -hmm. How long have you been together? 99 is what we say, though that's kind of a lie. Sorry, one second. 99 okay. is what we we're say, back. but that's kind of a lie. <laughs> 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 no, we, got, we were in grad school in 99, but we, we started mm -hmm. like 10 years basically. We've been playing concerts for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it took us from school. We were in school in New Haven at Yale, kind of a grad thing, and we moved to, to New York not so long after that. So, yeah, just, years. you studied with the same teacher? Yeah. Does at, that help? At Yale. Um, it does. Yeah, actually, one thing that was really cool about when, uh, when this group first got together at Yale, the teacher had only been there a few years, and he was doing master classes all over the place and sort of pulling people from lots of different places with different experience. Mm -hmm. So the experience we had together in grad school really bonded us with a kind of common vision. But for instance, Jason was in the jazz program at Eastman, studied with really great drum set players. Mm -hmm. um, Josh was a steel drum player, went to Trinidad, studied that whole thing. I had my own thing. Eric had his own thing. And the guys who were originally, there were a few other guys originally in the group. It's like within percussion, it's like such a big umbrella, you know, so people bring their own little areas of percussion to the table as well. So mm -hmm. it was a nice balance, you know. You have a lot of recordings. Yes. Which is great. Yeah. We love to and record. Yeah. So, are there particular recordings that individuals among the group are personally more attached to, or do you feel like you create these together, like all of them are your joint projects? 
That's a super interesting, oh. interesting question. Yeah. I will will say though that that one of the records we just put out is this Steve Mackey uh, mm -hmm. piece, and the, I don't know if we feel more attached to it than any of our other music. But it was a piece where we all got to sort of feature our own voices very heavily. Mm -hmm. And a lot of music that's written for us and for percussion is about a sort of big mass conformity of like everybody do the same thing right. in a really virtuosic way. Um, and Steve's vision was like to try to draw us out as individuals. Mm -hmm. I, think, I don't know. I think we have a lot of recording. This last month or something, we brought forward CDs, which is just Congratulations. recording. I mean, <laughs> it awesome, was crazy. Just kind of remarkably stupid probably but I think it's because we have so many different things that we're kind of interested in so mm -hmm. you know a commission that we're involved with like like Adam said that you know that kind of comes to fruition at a certain time but then there's also a lot of collaborations that are more real time um, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not sure it's an, an I don't necessarily have an attachment to one or the other I think we kind of um, I think like that it's really hard to pinpoint who we are and if you look at the recordings and you just listen to one recording you would kind of have no idea who we are for better or worse because mm -hmm. I think we, we kind of have our hands in a lot of baskets right now. Are those the right analogies? I feel yeah. like I'm mixing metaphors. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. They're good yeah. metaphors. Because the river and the water, you know. <laughs> it all flows. It's different stuff. viewers will have different yeah, ones they identify yeah. with. Perfect. I think that's great. I think that's great. Well, the thing is, I mean, like, as a, as a quartet, like, we have to all be on the same page mm -hmm. so much of the time. But then also, one of the cool things is we can split up the work among the four of us. I mean, I have to imagine as a soloist, it's like your career is, is always your responsibility, which is just a different... It's a different kind of career than when you're sharing it with three other people all the time. I like so, the joint work with either with a single colleague or various colleagues. When I get to totally. when I get to split a project, it's really nice. Yeah, and I mean, like that's what we do all the time. So, like your question about if we're if one of us is more attached to certain recordings, in some ways, there are times when one of us knows a particular composer better, and so we feel like more more responsibility for that project, more interest. We might have person. headed up the project in a way, and yeah. so there's that personal satisfaction. But then there's always a point at which like all four of us are there and completely invested in it too, mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a good mix of both. Okay, so delegating versus shared responsibilities. How do you function as a group, like either touring or recording? We're completely 25, 25, 25, 25, mm -hmm. all the way around. And Consistently um, the same things? Each person does the same? Yeah, we've been we've been developing specializations over the years, mm -hmm. both in administrative, well, really more administrative, actually. Artistically, there's been a <laughs> lot of, sh of shared space. <laughs> Artistically, there's been a lot of shared space. Administratively, there's so much to do that... Over the years, each of us has just sort of like learned this other career. Right. As a, I mean, Jason was booking us for years before we had a manager all by mm -hmm. himself, and we kind of all have our <laughs> own things. Some people like to, to spread this stuff around, but, you know, it gets to a certain point where it's like, okay, I know how to do this. This is my thing. But then we get into the rehearsal, and it's like a more of a commune. In the rehearsal, it's like all equal, all spreading, sharing around. When we're business, it's a little more, a little more cut and dry, you know? Yeah, for recordings, especially, there's a lot of work that goes into each one from, yeah. like, setting the sound in the first place to putting out the art, and the, the whole product and the editing and, and all of that. So I assume each one of you has which, an editing, yeah, editing like, process. Just that, that would be hard with four people. Right. Yeah, I don't know. That may be different project to project. But we do, on all these, most all of these records, anytime we can, we work with the same producer mm -hmm. who used to actually play in the group. So it's somebody who oh. really knows our sound. Yes. And is now more of a recording engineer and uh, now more of a producer. Mm -hmm. uh, his name's Lawson White, and he's remarkable. So actually, I think in terms of like editing, a lot of times we have maybe, I don't know what it's like for you, but we have a little bit less, because he, he brings things to the table pretty That's good. close to where we're at. Yeah, um, and same with mixing. I mean, we're definitely in the room on in a big way, but he really knows our sound. So um, that, I think, has helped us be able to, to you mm -hmm. know, put out things quicker or... Because it's, yeah. Absolutely. Because yeah. that's and a lot to have it's all a lot. that recordings coming, all those recordings coming totally out at the time. same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you always work with the same people, or do you find that you get interested in hearing different, the way different producers work or engineers? Or I tend to stick with, like, if, if it's working, I stick with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so I have a producer I really love working with, Andreas Meyer, and I've known him since I first. Oops, since I first started recording at, well, since my second album at Sony, he was with me. So I've worked with him for like 13 years on and off. And now I finally am in a situation where um, I'm able to work with him again. So that's great. But I've worked with different producers along the way. It's good well, to see what other people's ideas are. Yeah. Totally. And your uh, Ives disc just came out, right? Yeah. I haven't had a chance yeah, to check it out yet, but I can't <laughs> wait. Yeah, we're all doing such, if you put all of our repertoire together, I think 
You know, we, we would probably stand <laughs> about yeah. everything. A lot of American music <laughs> happening right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess my yeah. final question is, um, as a percussion ensemble, do all of you play all of the instruments? And, you know, if nope. you, For a long, how do you do that? I think we tend to feel like we can all know enough to be dangerous on most everything mm -hmm. in the arsenal, but we tend to know what our strengths and weaknesses are. And I think that's one of the things that, like we were talking about being in a quartet, the luxury is that you can really rely on those strengths and really be honest about the weaknesses. And then mm -hmm. the best product is put forward for people every night. And I mean, I think, I, I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm really competent on, on, the, on the marimba, but I play steel drums really well. And I think if we were to just be like totally, them, you know, random and pull names out of a hat, just to be fair, Nobody else knows how to play steel drums, so that would be really stupid for me to say, <laughs> Eric, you're going to play steel drums, and I'm going to play a really hard rumba part. We just tend to sort of like, Jason's really good at drum set, when the drum set part comes up, we know it's going to sound best, so mm -hmm. his best sound is going to be on stage if he's playing drum set, mm -hmm. if I'm playing steel drums or whatever, like, we all sort of have figured that out over time. I mean, percussion is so stupid like that, it's like saying you're a string, you play strings. Yeah. Are you, you playing bass I mean? today like, or yeah. viola? Like, yeah. what's, what are you or playing today this piece? Or, yeah. You know what I mean, it's like yeah. that's such a huge thing that... Like, I mean, there's there's kind of a, everybody, there's something that we generally agree upon that every every classical percussion should be able to do, but mm -hmm. that is really like this compared <laughs> to what's out there. So I think we are, mm -hmm. between the four of us, we've been able to branch and have many branches. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's crazy, right? We were yeah. giving a class the other day and we said percussion, you know, and, and somebody came from a totally different background. It's like, wow, that's like saying... You're a wind player. You play every or a string. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's such yeah, a kind it's of. True. It's an anomaly. Yeah. It's true. Okay. Okay. I have one final, final, final question. Yes. Cheating. Which is I know I it's cheating, but what do you guys love most about what you do? Josh, when he was trying to say that, Josh, <laughs> and then Eric. I can't leave you out. And then, and then, then you. Come here. It's okay. In that order, exactly. Give me a hug when we're actually. After we, you know, okay. Camera. I do. I would have to say the the people aspect of it is mm -hmm. is probably the best part. Um, and when I was in school, of course, when we're in school, we're so you know laser focused, and it's all mm -hmm. about learning the craft, you know. And I never even really considered that. I never even thought that actually the best part about working would be the people you're working with. And there is a part of me that feels like if we were all picking up trash together, we would have almost as much fun. Mm -hmm. If I really think about that, maybe that's not true, but, but I think <laughs> there's close. I think there's some truth to that. I think for me, I, I love. I think this Cage show really sort of exploits the idea that or exploits the thing that I think I love the most of like every night when you walk on stage you can prepare as much as you want but then once you get on stage it sort of all goes out the window and you have and I know especially with the quartet is you sort of have to rely on uh, being able to deal with things as they come and this cage show tonight really sort of like you never know really what's going to happen or what's going to come out sometimes and I, I think that one aspect of our lives that you sort of don't have any control over is almost the most beautiful thing because the rest of your day is spent like emailing or doing yeah. budgets or whatever and it's just sort of like nuts and bolts stuff and then when you finally get on stage for an hour and a half and you're sort of just up it's up to the gods as to what comes out it's it, i think that's a really refreshing refreshing thing absolutely well thank you guys good luck tonight thank yes, you like